Hello and welcome to a very special visit to the Lego house in Billund, Denmark, where we're going to learn over the next 20 minutes the full history of the company. Now, I have tried to do this video on multiple occasions. It's never been that successful because it has been usually so busy down here. But I came down the second the doors opened and we had a nice clear run. So we're going to go through absolutely everything. I'm going to zoom in on the important dates best I can. And then you guys and girls can get a better understanding of the importance of this place and how the company was first born all the way through to present day. So we're starting in 1930 to 1940, so we're at the very beginning. It has got it in English and the local language as well, and you can just see we'll zoom in on all of the different models. You might have to pause it in different places because obviously it is a museum, so people are always walking by, so I can't spend too long in the same place because I didn't want anybody to overtake me because I just wanted a nice, clear run but you can see the wooden toys kicked off in 1930s and this is where they started this is how they created they created all as wooden toys and then we'll go over all the different fires when the brick was introduced the birth of the minifigure and everything like that but you can see he goes on about how only the best is good enough and to this day that is the motto for the company so we go through sort of decade by decade of all the different history and you can see that they've got all of the original bits and pieces. So that is why the duck is so important. There is a big duck available at the Lego house as an exclusive Lego set. And I have learnt that the element of the duck, which was a single moulded piece, that is now currently selling for nearly £500 on the second hand market. And I have actually managed to have one in hand and film one in one of my Lego store videos that will be coming up or would have already been uploaded. So keep your eyes peeled for that one because it is a very, very special element. And I've got a lot more history on the duck in that video, but we'll carry on with the history of the company. So you can see specialized all in different wooden toys. So you can see it was all trains. It was in cars. We then, I do believe, get the Ferguson tractor mould that will then come in at a certain point and as we come round and go through. So you've got, we're in the 1940s, so we'll come up and this is when the fire starts. So one late night in March in 1942, there was a circuit short out and it just all went up in flames. You can see to the right hand side, that is the Lego employees stood around the factory that completely burnt down in 1942 but the amazing thing is the community all got back together they started to rebuild the factory and they just gave it another go so it is incredible how this company came about how they decided to start with the lego brick so you can see starting over so in 1942 they started back over again start from the drawing board and then just carried on you have got really good information with regards to all different types of videos you can see how and quickly the factories came through so in 1943 we had 40 employees there was a nice modern factory made up and then down and round you can see some of the bits and pieces that they were producing so they were the toys that were on string there's your vehicles and then it just you can see how they've moved from here to the Lego brick, but still sort of kept their different bits and pieces. So they're your early 1940s and 1950s. So as we're coming through and round, you'll come to what is basically the first brick moulding. And then as we come a little bit further on, we'll get a little bit more information in that. So experiments in plastic. So they started to then experiment in different bits and pieces with different injection moulds and plastic moulds. You can see that is some of the first bricks made in one of the first original boxes. They do obviously have all of the box numbers on there as well. So if you did actually want to backtrack any of the really, really older sets, just pause on some of the older sets and you'll see for yourself what the sets those are. So if you wanted a set of your birth year, for example, you will be able to find one more than likely within this video. And definitely there will be one in the sort of history of all the Lego sets, which is the video that went up before this one, where they're all the Lego sets and all the boxes, and you can see them in the different decade from the beginning all the way around. So that display currently has all of the massive roller coasters on display, the football pitches, and has every single modular currently to date. Now we are skipping around and moving on. I know I'm moving quite quickly, but like I said, this is 20 minutes at this pace. So if you, you could spend a huge amount of time within this area. Now, this is the Ferguson tractor in the 1950s. They spent an absolute fortune on this mold. And you can see how the profits went against how much everything cost. And it was a massive investment into the company. 
And then at this point, it was a 50-50 split with regards to profit of plastic to wooden toys. And it, it was not until, I do believe, the second fire of the factory, they then decided to go 100% into plastic mould and they, got, they stopped all wooden production. But what I do like is in the middle where you can see you've got the little bits and pieces to sit down for the older ones and the younger ones, there is always somewhere to build and play with different bits and pieces. And the, project, the projection wall as well, that's a really nice wall. You've got some nice bits and pieces that get put onto there and you can just sit and watch all of the shadows and everything go around if you wanted to. So there's lots of things to do and have a look at down this way. A lot of people tend just to bolt down here, go to the year of their birth or when they first started to collect their own sets or their first set that they ever got given. And they end up taking a picture of that. They end up taking a picture of the year of the minifigure and then they, they tend to leave. They don't, not everybody will walk around and soak all of it in, but there is a lot to read. So it goes into when it first came into the different retail side of it. You can see the different boxes. So give it a pause if you need to. I used it on a GoPro this time rather than my handheld camera just because it was a little bit brighter because it is quite dark down here. So I can't zoom in, but I think the picture is a little bit clearer. You can see all of the different accessories and things that you've got, all the different types of mould, the smaller ones, the bigger ones. And when we get round, it'll be introduced in the wheel soon enough as well. So it took a while for them to actually introduce the wheel that we now know and love, which we can add on to all of our different cars. But that took a good few years from when it first came about. So we're into the foreign sales office, coming down into the different Lego system. Now, as we go around, take a look at all of the logos on the boxes, because there are multiple logos throughout the decades. And then obviously we have the logo that we have now, but the font for the Lego is completely different. And obviously this says Lego system, whereas that is something that we do not have at the moment. And we can see Lego explains town play. Number one is their first Lego system play and product. But you can see that this scale would did not have the minifigures in. So it took a while for them to then introduce vehicles where you could actually get minifigures into the vehicles and then have the minifigures in play as well. So you've got all of these different towns where they're coming around, but you can see you've got some of the minifigures that have already been introduced down there. But some of the vehicles above, they would not have been big enough to sit a minifigure in. So they had to redesign all of the different bits and pieces. So a huge amount of work went in just for, as you can see, the perfection of trying to make a mini figure scale city. And I think that is what everybody to this day is trying to do with their own collections as well. But as we go around, obviously please do let me know. So that's the important bit. 28th of January, 1958 at 1.58, the pattern for the Lego brick was born. So that is the original pattern. That's how they managed to get the brick as good as what they've got now. So from that day in 1958 to when I'm doing this voiceover in 2023, all the bricks will be exactly the same size and they will still interlock with each other. So from 1958, any of the bricks that you backtrack in your collection from any of the sets, they will still clip together. So it's very, very, um, it's just amazing that it can, it can be done that way and they haven't changed the system. It's just almost a perfect system for them because it works so well. But what I was going to say is as we go around, any of the sets that you have got in your collection or anything that you would like to backtrack, please do let me know in the comments below. I'd be very interested to know where you guys and go started to collect. What was your first set that you got given? And can you remember having any of these sets or seeing any of these sets, for example, in the 1960s, 1970s as we move around now? The next fire happens, it burnt the factory completely down, and then this is where they went full ball into absolutely everything, just with the plastic. And you can see, you've got all the different wheels, so that is the first box of the wheels as well, they introduced all of those, and as you can come up, it will have on the artwork there that you'll be introducing all the little different bits and pieces within in the elements. So in 1960s, that is where they were inventing the wheel, and that was Lego set number 314, so different sizes, perfect with a different size of plate so if you want to backtrack and get this original box for whatever reason that is the first ever box where you could buy different size wheels where you could then finally make up your own cars your own tractors your own bikes and different bits and pieces like that so it is a rather important set in history but if you are interested in one of those i would imagine you might still be able to get one of those i don't know what the condition of the box would be like now we're moving on to the airport and the importance of this so the grass strip turns into a billand airport so where we land now that is the information about it. 500 meters wide on the 10th of September, 1962. It has changed a lot and it's changed massively in the last year or so because they've added in all sorts of new technology with regards to how you get in and out the airport. 
and it's just much sm- well, I say much smoother process. It's, it's always been nice and simple, but it's a little bit quicker because you now have your scan your passports through lots and lots of gates to get through. And they I think they've added in a few more terminals as well. So it is expanding quickly. I think they want to really open it up to the mass market and get as many people into Billund as possible because there is so much to do for the big ones and small ones alike that the airport now to well, as of 2023, it is still been sorted out and there are always doing little bits and pieces so if you ever do get chance to come to the lego house just remember the airport that you will be landing in you'll be able to see where it started from which would be the lego group now moving on to the trains do you have any of the trains or any of the elements that you can see within this with regards to anything under the old lego system banner i had given from back when one or two of these but i'm not 100 percent sure where they are now And then as we come up and come around, it will be when they finally get into the USA and how they started to break the going west market. So in 1961, the Lego Group reaches the American shores and then they started to get it into all of their different stores and everything over there. And then we'll go into Once Upon a Time in Legoland. So this is where the first Legoland was built and it was a, a thing that just completely took them by surprise i think with how many people visited and they added so much so quickly to the one in billing but you can see that is the original blueprint super simple thing mini land in the middle big circle around the outside you can see the original sort of cowboy and indians bits and pieces they did have like live horses that you could ride on back then completely changed now and then in 1969 so they had the big bricks for tiny fingers that is where the Duplo was introduced. But you can see huge amount of the original Lego land. You've got all of the original Lego models. That's completely changed as well. They have added in so much over the multiple years that it's there. But it's crazy to think that the Legoland park itself opened up in the 1970s. And they have just kept going and going and got stronger and stronger. And I would imagine it would be nice to know if there is any of the original models in the Miniland that have just been refurbed or if they've all been ripped out and can been completely redone since 1970. So if you know, then obviously please do let me know because I'm into that kind of into that kind of thing. So we are now moving into 1970 and 1980. So again, lots of different bits and pieces to see as we pan round and come down. There's lots to soak in, a lot to look at. And as we come in to the Duplo prototype, and you, I would imagine soon enough, we will see the pattern as well. And there was an arrow there saying that was the first brick molding machine outside of Billund itself. Now, this is a huge area. So this is in its own completely separate video. Every single one of those sets we've had a good look at. And in the glass cabinets at either edge, that is where all of the modular sets are, the football pitches and every single theme park set to date, including the original old school cabinets carousel which is now worth an absolute small fortune coming through you have got some of the older sort of larger scale uh, figures and then you've got the vintage cars as well so that is what kicked off i guess what is now the lego creator and the lego icon set that is where they did the slightly larger scale models but you can see the figures at this point weren't still the right size to fit into those vehicles so soon enough the minifigure will be introduced but as we come around look here we go minifigure prototype so this is where the minifigure was born and perfected. But you can see it's also linked into all of the Duplo different bits and pieces. You've got the Lego Lego Yellow Castle, the original one. We've got the original space. This is where a lot of people start to get interested and a lot of people where they tend to come to because this is where I think quite a lot of people either have got given this as one of the sets for Christmas or people have backtracked those sets because they know just how important it is to sort of like the history company and obviously on the birthday they have redone the Lego castle and the spaceship as well but we are in 1978 now I do believe that said and then we'll be coming round and down and we will be having a look at the minifigure itself so this is where it all got done all got designed and it's just cool that you can actually just stop if you want to take a load of photos um, of all the little bits and pieces that are on the wall up nice and high so there's a lot of sort of visual stuff to soak in with regards to all of the pictures as well as all the writing so if you do struggle taking a lot of information you can just sort of have a look at all the different sets if you want to as well and you get a good understanding of as you go around because obviously like i said you've got the birth certificate right at the very very start and you can get a good gist of as you go around all the things that you are looking at and then if you just want to check out the dates of where you're at obviously you can do but we're in 1980 to 1990 now and then we're coming around and we've got just their mentality of doing different bits and pieces linked in with what i do believe now is some of the bigger and older um duplo sets 
And then we're introducing the fire service, the police station. Again, there's another castle there as well. There was very strong years for Lego. And then they went a little bit bizarre. And then they reined it back in again. And then we are now where we're at now. So Lego Prizes, the future belongs to our children. So they, I think that's at 85. They start talking about different bits and pieces and sort of like the educational side for the kids. And then you've got some of the space sets. It's just a minefield of information and absolutely everything. But were you a Pirates fan? Were you a castle collector? Did you have any of these sets back then? Do you like the themes now? Because they were very, very heavy on the themes back in the day. And obviously it's taken a while for them to then reintroduce all of these Lego sets again. But you can see how often that they're adding in the different um, police and the fire. And then we've got the, what is, I do believe, the friends take because that was the paradise and then as we come around, you've got the early Technic sets. So in 1990, this is where the Technic sets were introduced, which I know were hugely popular with a lot of people. Some people don't like them, but I don't think they realise the importance of what they did to the company. This is where they went crazy. So they went digital from the mid-1990s, and they were introducing all sorts of different games and all of these other different bits, weird and wonderful things as well. Obviously, the Bionicle sets were a massive saviour to the company, but they did introduce, or well, try to introduce different bits. I think that set, I do believe I got in 97 or 98. I remember having that, and it's where it all started to change. It all started to get a little bit more bulky and blocky. But they soon they soon brought it all all back again. So they they did go through a phase, shall we say, and then they um they soon reined it all reined it all back in because they they changed the they changed the realization of what they needed to do, and then before you know it, it was back to what everybody really got on with and loved. So if you can remember going through those phases in the comments below, let me know. Let me know where you went into your dark ages. Let me know when you came back. You can see down there was one of the original Star Wars sets, and then then there's more writing and different bits and pieces on the wall. So coming through 2000, 2010, we will come down. This is where they started to introduce all the licenses. So this they, they changed their mentality after September the 11th attacks, I do believe. That is what they are saying on that. They had the date of 9-11. And then as it comes around, you can see you've got all the different licenses down here for Star Wars. Then they've got Bionicle and then they've got all the Harry Potter. This is where they went really heavy within all of the different themes. And it was around this time, I do believe, they had to sell some of the Legoland parks as well. But it was a, they do believe, well, it does say that it was a complete game changer for the Bionicle. This is one of the main things that sort of resurrected the, uh, the company as such. And they had amazing TV adverts and TV shows, I do believe, for that theme. And I think a lot of people clicked to that. And they sold absolutely huge amounts of units. It'd be very interesting if they re-released a retro range of the original five or six characters just for a few months how many people would want to do it on back order but you can see losing faith in the brick because a lot of people started to pull away from it because i think it was very much a case that they had opened up too many markets too quickly and then they like i said they soon fixed the issue and started to rein it all back in again so they they made a decision that didn't go too well and then they brought it straight back in but it's great that they did actually manage to save themselves because at one point they nearly went under completely. Now, have you got the micro scale um, modular sets? That is a set that is still available. I say it's still available on the second hand market for not a too bad a price. That is a micro sort of scale. And then back on track by 2008. So the early 2000s weren't fantastic for the Lego group. But after that, they soon soon brought it all back in. And it was the Lego Technic, the Bionicle, and some of these sets as well, I do believe, where they got into the Lego educational sets. That's where they really started to save started to save the company. And I do believe maybe they started to introduce some of the architectural sets as well. And then they went sort of back to basics with regards to what other sets that they were introducing with the police stations, the fire stations, and just making it more Lego City-based for play. So I think we'll come around and have a look at some of the other little basic sets and then obviously when the friends and everything got introduced so 2010 onwards so this is 2010 to 2023 so i would imagine now if you are a slightly newbie to the company there must be something that you'd recognize here you've got to recognize some of this ninjago bits and pieces so you've got you can see how they 
did got rid of the Chima or Chima and then went straight into Ninjago and Ninjago to this day is still going on strong. There's still new shows being released in 2023 and that started all the way back in 2010. So that is a massive achievement to the Lego Group Company and the Lego Friends then got introduced. So they, they had some massive heavy hitters back to back in the early sort of 2010s and they are still going to this day. So they sort of got a very good foundation and then they just sort of built on that as they've gone as they've gone through, which is a really, a really nice credit to them. But you can see that is now, I guess, the vintage friend sets, because as of me doing this voiceover in, at the start of 2023, they have done a full reboot of friends and they've reintroduced low. I say reintroduced. They've introduced lots of new characters and reintroduced the classic characters as well. So. If you are a big Friends collector and you want to try and backtrack some of the older sets, you can now because I think the older Friends logo, which is the Friends logo that we've just seen in that video, they are all in massive sales currently. Now, that is the one of the original big Porsches uh, for the Lego Technic that then went on to the Bugatti, which went on to the, blue, the green Lambo and the Ferrari and so on and so forth. So there are lots and lots and lots of them to collect and obviously to try and backtrack them is a bit of a nightmare but you can just see all of the different lego classic base plates some really nice little sets there and then underneath you've got the wind turbines which is them saying how they want to become sort of as clean as possible by their set year so just here look they're leaving a positive impact on the earth so by 2025 it all wants to be sustainable packaging so that is their target for 2025 and we're in 2023 currently i think that's a 25 it might be in 2035 so rewind that if you need to but the new hq is now done that is all built and finished that is the lego campus but guys that is it i am done so if you can like subscribe and all that good stuff that'd be absolutely fantastic but as always thank you very much for watching you guys take care and to catch the next one Ta da